What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and this video I want to talk about waterfall versus agile software methodologies. Software methodologies guys is one of those topics that I paid no attention to whatsoever in college and university. And uh, that's because we didn't really ship any software and we didn't really work on a real world software. So we didn't really care about these topics when the professor would explain it. It was like, what is waterfall? Who cares what is waterfall? Just let's sit down and code. We were all just saying that, right? But when I joined, actually, uh, when I started working in Kerry, I was like, oh, wait a second. This, these things are really important, huh? <laughs> so uh, that's my, so I went back to my software engineering uh, book and I started picking those uh, concepts up. But I, I want to display uh, describe uh, these, basically these two methodology for you guys. And in a briefly... And uh, I worked under two companies for my 16 years career on a company that does waterfall and a company that does agile. I'm going to give you some pros and cons for each, uh, to be honest. So how about we just jump into it? So waterfall. So the waterfall software method methodology is the idea is you start with collecting a requirement because the goal is to build some sort of a software, right? So you start with building this requirements, right? And here's the only chance where the customer and you should agree on this set of requirements. And that's it. You guys don't see each other at all, after all. So you sit together, you spend three, four months, whatever, you collect this requirement, right? And uh, usually the customer starts up with a request for proposal with a set of very high level things. And then you sit down and, and kind of work out the spec and the moment you have the whole spec or whatever you want to build and should be detailed to the neck every i don't know what that means <laughs> so it should be really 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 detailed it should cover every possible user interface every possible user interaction so this thing is really thick right so it's it, it just describe everything and then you say, bye customer, see you in seven months or 10 months or two years. And then you go and sit down and start development. And then the development stage, there are some stages that I'm not going to go through. But that's essentially the gist of it. You take the down requirements and you go down and then start developing and implementing the spec that you have got. Okay, this is a waterfall. That's why it's like waterfall, once it goes down... Ain't going up, all right? So that's it. So that's the idea of a waterfall. So what is the problem with this? Most pro most of the problem is when you start, you come six months later or 10 months, uh, one year later, you show what you built to the customer. He says, what what the heck is this? This is not exactly, this is not what we want. We we said that this button should do this, but this button should is doing that. But you would say, hey, it's not in the spec. And you were right. Most of the time, this is something you didn't think of because most of the features that you build, guys, and that's my personal opinion, comes when you actually see something moving, right? So it's like, oh, oh, I want it this way, right? You can't possibly plan for everything. You can. You can try. But rarely, rarely, rarely that happens, right? I know Seth Godin is is a huge fan of the waterfall method where he's just like, you know what? Because he built software before he started writing books, right? So he says like, no, you sit down, you write a good spec. And if it's really good spec, and I agree with him, if it's really, really goddamn good spec, then you will nail it. Definitely you're going to nail it. So you go down and then you start developing. And then if you show the customer and they are satisfied, you're done. Project is done, right? So that was the almost the most powerful and, and popular software development methodology. Obviously, it has some flaws and this, this, this uh, going back and showing the customer. And if you're lucky and the customer is happy and you wrote a good, good, good spec, you're good. You're off the hook. But if you go back and the customer says, nah, I don't like this because it's supposed to give me three columns in the table instead of two. Oh my gosh. You think, Hussein, wh wh why do you care? It's just uh, an additional column. No, it's not just an additional column. 
You think it's an additional column, right? You add this additional column to the user experience, but you also need to add it to the REST endpoint. Or if you're using GraphQL, you need to you need to return that extra payload from the GraphQL. So you need to a little bit change your query. You need to add additional parameter. Hey, that field didn't exist in the database. Well, we need to add that field. So that's the change to the schema. Well, that well that field is not getting populated by itself. So you need some methods to actually populate that field. That's extra logic. Or you have bugs. So it's not cheap. That hop back across the waterfall to change a requirement is so so expensive. So people said, eh, nah, that won't work. So they invented agile. Agile development is the idea of we know somehow what we want. And here it is. Okay, so they sat down and for for a quick, a very quick summary of what their requirements looks like. So you have the requirements, so you still need requirements, but you're not going off and you're not seeing each other for a year or two. No. What you do is you start segmenting your product into phases. And the good agile methodology, you better have something shippable every these iterations. Sometimes they call them sprints. Sometimes they call them iterations. Anything you want, right? But these segments, right? The whole thing is a release, all right? But the, this release is chopped into iterations, okay? Or sometimes they call them sprints. And at the every end of the sprint, you need to show me something shippable that I can actually heh, use. Okay, and these are usually called alphas. So sprint maybe alpha one. This is alpha two. This is alpha three, alpha four, and so on, right? Until the end of the release, almost the end of the release, you release beta, and then finally you release the actual software, and then and so the, you're you're in constant move with the customer. So it's really cheaper to make changes at these stages of the iterations, right? Because you're gonna make something, and and uh, you you will end up essentially shipping the user and then the user will see it and they will give you feedback and then you use that feedback to kind of fuel the rest of the release hey guys hussein from editing here i realized that as i was describing i missed describing one important thing in agile these short burst of released software that can be shipped is also referred to by another fancy term called continuous delivery or continuous integration all right uh I'm, i'll make a different video just talking about these two but know that continuous integration is within this iteration these sprints that we talked about as developers install we need to be able to integrate these different pieces compile them make sure they are work continuous delivery is the idea of packaging and building that software so it's actually can have a final product and be used. All right, back to the video. But here's the thing, guys. That segments, you think it's easy, but it's not, right? And this, uh, based on this agile methodology, two uh, roles were born. A product owner who manages this release and the product and a scrum master, okay? They don't have to be with Agile, but I'm just taking the general use case. But so the product owner job is and it is a very hard job, right? Because he needs to or she needs to take that result of features that they talked about and they agreed about. You just at the beginning of the release, you only have features and then you guys start having bugs. So you have a bunch of features and that product owner should start segmenting those features across these sprints so he or she have something shippable at the end of the each iterations or, or sprint so that you can demo something to the user and that's incredibly hard first of all you're responsible to build those features to write it down to spec them out you're responsible to clear and prioritize the backlog that's called backlog by the way every issue 
every single feature has the whole thing is called a backlog and you're responsible for really ordering the priority so that your team member your developers your engineers can pick up anything from the queue and start immediately coding and start working on that so they don't have time to organize this so they look and they pull that item and they start working so that's the job of the product owner and the other job is a scrum master the scrum master is and because it's an agile process the team should show some sort of progress on a daily basis and those daily basis meetings are called scrum s-c-r-u-m okay the scrum is a meeting a standard meeting usually for 15 minutes that a whole team meeting just meet and they talk about what they have done in the previous day and that's it they just hey with this i did i worked on this issue and no 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 and uh, you make progress you say okay this is where am i or i am impeded now because this bug is with this or you you just show progress you need to see progress every single day because these are very short these iterations are what sometimes four weeks sometimes three weeks sometimes five weeks iterations so yeah these iterations differ in, in length but they are very short right because you know, in one month how, what can you build right but that's the trick you have to build something and the person who manages those daily meetings daily scrums is called the scrum master and they are responsible that the daily progress is actually uh on target to for the end of the iteration or the sprint to have a shippable product that they can show this customer that's essentially the goal in a nutshell the scrum master or the product owner so the the agile process does solve some big problem with the waterfall which is you you're out of touch with a customer but it does come with its own disadvantages as well the so first disadvantage is you don't really know what the software is gonna look like you might start building something at the end of the release you end up building something completely different and as a result of this you acquire some sort of a technical debt that we call it so you build your so yeah the first of the iteration you start building nice code and commented and all that stuff and you build some structure and classes but then the next iteration the customer comes back with other requirement that nullify your work so you feel really bad inside so it's like, oh my god i'm gonna kill my baby i'm not gonna kill my baby so you start killing your babies and um, that's it yeah you move on you start writing another code and you're not as motivated so that's one disadvantage right and the other disadvantage is the customer takes advantage of this right if, if you go back and you ask them they they've always gonna ask for more they're always gonna say oh just do this little tweak just do this little tweak just add this little button that's just like this little do the css and um yeah they take advantage of this and the customer the project might suffer as a result and because of this the project can easily fall off track because yeah you you have a goal you have a this and this sort of release but if the customer keeps adding more stuff then you can easily just drift off of the situation so is there something perfect no waterfall people that were workful are extremely what's the word they use conscientious that's the word right so conscientious and industrial right people who are extremely organized right so if you are one of those people kudos to you right it was like you sit down and you write a spec and that spec is going to be flawless because you sit down and you do every single research possible and you sit down and then you start building it obviously it's not going to be perfect right my preferred method is kind of agile not the actual agile but eh, a little bit flexible i don't like to plan thoroughly i know this might be bad but i like to kind of wing it you know i just have an idea i i write it down i write the initial plan but i don't spend seven months planning it's not me right if if you like to plan that's the best way obviously um, i am i like to kind of see effort so i i work something out and i show it to my colleagues to critique and i they then uh, rework it rework it rework it so that I, I show something else i don't i don't come up to do something perfect because 
I'm not gonna come up with anything perfect at all. So I like this iterative process. And uh, uh, Seth Godin calls this thrashing. So thrash at the beginning as much as possible. So he's he's very industrious and conscientious, obviously, right? A, a trait that I don't have. <laughs> but uh, if, if you do that, if you don't have that, you can also st come up with a plan, write a bad plan, write a bad spec, and then talk it out with your friends and then kind of negotiate and just work the kinks out. All right, guys. So that's a, that's a video talking about Agile Waterfall. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. What should I discuss next? I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay out, safe out there. Goodbye.